Because um, I just think that although policymakers generally talk in a sort of double speak um, and make a great play of saying nothing, occasionally they do say things which one ought to pay a degree of attention to. Um, so I've got a couple of these I thought I'd run past you. First of all was um, Mr. Bernanke, uh, before he became Fed chairman, who said, like gold, U.S. dollars have value only to the extent they are strictly limited in supply. But the U.S. government has a technology called a printing press, or today its electronic equivalent, that allows it to produce as many U.S. dollars as it wishes at essentially no cost. By increasing the number of U.S. dollars in circulation, or even by credibly threatening to do so, the U.S. government can also reduce the value of a dollar in terms of goods and services which is equivalent to raising the prices in dollars of those goods and services. We conclude that under a paper money system, a determined government can always generate higher spending and hence positive inflation. Uh, the second one is, is one which I'm sure almost all of you have heard, but I just think it, it, it merits a uh, reappraisal, which was Greenspan's comment before he became uh, part of the the grand machine of high finance, when he was really, I suppose, an economic theorist. And this was back in 1966. And he said, in the absence of the gold standard, there is no way to protect savings from confiscation through inflation. There is no safe store of value. This is the shabby secret of the welfare status tirades against gold and silver. Deficit spending is simply a scheme for the confiscation of wealth. Gold and silver stand in the way of this insidious process. It stands as a pr protector of property rights. If one grasps this, one has no difficulty in understanding the statist's antagonism toward the gold standard. And the reason I bring this up is I uh, recently was watching Greenspan being grilled for his previous efforts. And he described what was going on as a once in a lifetime economic tsunami. And I think again, this is an example where you should pay attention to what he's saying, because I think he he actually knows what he's saying in, in great detail in this example. And this is where the whole argument of deflation versus inflation is one which is clearly very, very important for all of us. But I think that, that what perhaps he was getting at is that you've seen effectively the sea disappear out over the horizon. Asset prices have been destroyed and people have emerged onto the beach amazed, goggle-eyed, and staring and going, what, what's going on? What's happening here? And then they see the fish flapping about, which I would um, say probably represent the U.S. Treasury and, and U.K. gilt markets. Uh, and people are going down and they're piling into Treasury paper because they perceive that to be the place to put their cash. I think probably actually for the very short term they may be right. But what Greenspan, I feel, may well have been inferring is the second stage of the tsunami, which I'm sure we're all aware is the deployment of said printing presses by Mr. Bernanke um, and the monetization of US Treasury debt, which I, I fear it's almost impossible to avoid significant inflationary consequences. Uh, in that environment, silver and gold are what you should be owning. Um, if you can get hold of some physical metal, terrific. I certainly recommend you do it. But equally, I would suggest that the companies we're going to present to you today off offer you an extremely uh, interesting opportunity, particularly down at these levels. I can't um, guarantee that the way things will roll out is the way we all want, but in terms of the overall picture, I think you do a lot worse than focusing some attention on silver at this time. Um, thank you very much. <laughs>